I'm going for a test of pulmonary lung function and it was a couple of weeks ago and I was calling my doctor trying to get the results and not getting calls back and I was getting so frustrated and finally they called me back and they said oh you have obstructive lung disease and you need to see the specialist ASAP so of course I am sitting here I had pulled over to get the phone and I am sitting outside the police station kind of freaking out because that's all she said to me and then she hung up <laughs> and um, so I called the specialist and got an appointment for the next morning and I was feeling very anxious but at least I only had to wait till then because they squeezed me in which was super nice and um, when I saw the doctor he said yeah you have asthma so of course we wanted to see you and I'm like asthma I mean not that that's a walk in the park I've got to use inhalers and medications and even this morning with all of this you know over 24 hours of treatment I'm still having to stop between chicken pens and rest a little bit but I'm not having like the trouble with breathing like I was having so it's so much better um, and the best thing is I asked specifically I said you know I have a, a small farm I have a half acre of gardens I have goats I have chickens I have rabbits do I have to give this up and he said no absolutely not we want you to stay active we want you to continue your lifestyle that's why you're taking these inhalers and things so I was so excited that I don't have to give everything up didn't cry in the doctor's office because <laughs> <laughs> managed to hold it together but I was so excited and happy because I had so many plans and um, you know um, if it wouldn't have worked out I could have lived at the beach in a little cottage and gone out and wandered in the sand in the spring winter and fall I don't really much like the beach in the summer or something like that um, and I would have been fine, but this is what I really want to do, and I was so excited I got to keep doing it. And so I usually don't share anything quite this personal, but I've been trying not to be discouraged for the past couple weeks and really feeling like, you know, I can not even breathe. And I just wanted to encourage anyone else who is going through something where they can't figure out their health or maybe it's even just that they're feeling like they can't breathe when they come outside to keep seeing your doctors get it figured out and keep believing that you'll be able to follow your dreams so I've been up early and cored a whole bunch of apples which I didn't think I even went to watch because it takes a while but I have an apple core peeler which is amazing and I've already cleaned the peels and I'm giving some to the chickens because they love them and some of the mushy bits. Um, the cores have all gone into another container for the compost because I'm just hesitant to feed chickens cores because of the apple seeds. One of the things I've been having to put off is cleaning out the chicken runs and putting in fresh material because they're basically creating compost for me here and I like to rake it out and put it into a pile and let it rot down a little bit more and then this spring I've got this amazing stuff to spread so I'll be able to do this now these ladies are going to be ready to lay eggs pretty soon so the roosters have been crying for a good month and now do you see she's squatting so you know when they start doing that egg laying is not far off so We'll be having some nice fresh banty eggs from these little girls. Colette still isn't part of the gang, unfortunately. I was hoping she'd be, you know, kind of integrate a little better. It's not that anyone picks on anyone or anything, but at night she sits outside till the very last minute, and then she does all this kind of back talk with me. Um, when she sees me coming, she jumps off and she mutters the whole way can't believe she's making me go to bed this is awful I'm having to go to bed with these other chickens I just want to sleep outside I mean she just crumbles the entire way into the coop it's so funny um, I'm talking about you pretty girl but they eat beside each other and stuff so it's not that she's not getting along with them she just doesn't want to cuddle with them. so I'm not by any means you know able to potentially run a marathon or anything like that but I can come outside and take in a deep breath 
and not start coughing and clutching at my lungs. Um, so it's awesome. So now let's talk about the fall garden. It's been super hot. I think it's been too hot for carrots because you can see the collards came up pretty decent and the beets actually came up. It's not their fault. Something ate them. Somebody has to reset the beets too. But on either end, I have no carrots. My cabbages are heading up pretty good. We have a little damage from things trying to gnaw at them, but I'll just be able to cut it off. And I know I've said before, I prefer a couple wormholes to a bunch of pesticides. I'm still hopeful. I don't know why at this point, but I'm still hopeful. You can see no fruit, no fruit. Um, I do have more evidence, if you can see right there, of nature doing the work for me. That one worm has been absolutely covered in little lost bags and he'll be gone. So, yeah, for whatever reason, I have not gotten with all of these. I have five eggplants in my yard and not one single solitary fruit. But it has not been the year of the eggplant for me. Last year I had so much eggplant I couldn't keep up with it. And that's one reason I think it's really super important to always sow variety. Because if I would have said, oh, eggplants do great here, that's all I'm going to grow, I would be really bummed out right now. But I also sowed celery and tomatoes and cabbages and kales. And a lot of things did amazingly. But for whatever reason, even with all this heat, maybe too much heat, the eggplants haven't done well. But down here, we're trying one more round of squash. This is a scalloped yellow squash. Um, very slow germination. This is the first one that's actually germinated for me and I've tried several weeks in a row. So hopefully no one snips him off because he's very quick to mature once he starts growing. And we can get a nice little kind of patty pan squash harvest right before winter sets in. My nursery stock is all doing amazing. I did mulch it all with grass clippings just to make sure I keep down the weeds between them. But look at these beautiful little spirea already just growing right on. Um, this is because I bought them from somebody who really did a good job rooting them and they were able to establish very quickly. So, and these guys, I'm so excited. So these are silver dollar hydrangeas. They don't look like much now. But they're basically a miniature hydrangea with a very similar flower to limelight, which is my all-time favorite hydrangea. And I am delighted to be able to grow these guys. There is a limelight over at my mom's house, and I do visit it on occasion and cut myself a huge bouquet because I just love it. But I've had the worst luck finding limelight hydrangeas um, around here to put just in my landscape they're not ones you can propagate because they are still patented but um it's my favorite hydrangea and it's impossible to find you know the dog was again it's doing great this is going to be an amazing amount of color in the winter when these establish this yellow and red that it'll just be showing up in the snow and it'll look great so they're settling in pretty good as well. And of course my willows that I got from cuttings in early spring are really taking off still. And I have an unnamed forsythia and some unnamed oak leaf hydrangeas that I had put in a little while ago and they've all rooted and are doing well. So this is my cutting garden. Winter sand mustard. It's pretty much a success. Again, a lot of bug pressure. A lot of things I think I'm going to re sow again in a month because I had much, much better luck last year sowing for the fall and winter gardens in September. But everyone said it was too 
late and I should have done it in August. So I tried it and I think I was right with September. A little bit of endive coming up here. And then this was a really good stand of stuff. And this was, and that was, and they all got eaten. So I'll definitely have to redo all of them. I have these guys sitting in the greenhouse, sprouting up, getting ready to go. So I'll be able to transplant a lot of things out as well. So that about wraps things up for me. I've been out here about an hour. I'm starting to have a little trouble with breathing, so I'm going to go in. Um, so much better than it has been. I got a whole bunch of little chores done and all the animals. I got to spend time with them instead of just taking care of them. And I got to pick some fresh vegetables and check on all my seedlings and all. So I'm really pleased. I hope you all have a wonderful day too. And I'll talk to you next time.